It's in the name. Welcome in to the Helping Healing Humor podcast with Paula and Haley. We're going to be interviewing Ben and Travis today, and we're going to get into that conversation right after these messages. This episode of the Helping Healing Humor podcast is brought to you by the 2023 Heritage event on Saturday, August 26th, featuring an incredible night of music from the front men of country, the Secret Sisters, and Cadence Baker. General admission tickets and table sponsorships are available for purchase. For more information, visit www.hcu.edu. The mission of Heritage Christian University is simple. They aim to advance the churches of Christ by equipping servants through undergraduate and graduate programs. HCU produces effective communicators of the gospel, focusing on evangelism and a commitment to scripture. Heritage Christian University offers the following degrees, Associate of Arts in Biblical Studies, Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Studies, Master of Arts, Master of Ministry, and Master of Divinity. HCU is accredited by the Association for Biblical Higher Education and is an associate member of the Association of Theological Schools. Since 1968, Heritage Christian University has offered affordable degrees in Biblical Studies, allowing graduates to thrive in their ministries without the burden of loan debt. For the fall 2023 semester, HCU is offering full tuition scholarships for graduate-level students. For more information about Heritage Christian University or the annual Heritage event, visit www.hcu.edu. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Paula. And this is Kaylee Hendricks. And today we're interviewing uh, Travis Crazy and Ben Hayes at Maywood Christian Camp. Our last Maywood question is, if you could have one thing from this camp in your everyday life, what would it be? Something you could take in your life and take it home and just keep That's with yourself. going to be podcasters before too long. I'm telling you. The people. I mean, like, okay. if, if you, like, I love my church family, okay? But I love Maywood because he doesn't it's, like them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. This is not true. Just kidding, Holland Park. Just kidding. Holland Park listeners are like, oh. <laughs> No, they don't. They get tired of listening to me, so they don't listen. To this. Um, I, I, it's not. I, I love my church family. I've loved all the church families I've got to work with. But the beautiful thing about Maywood is that you have people from all the church families, or a lot of the church families, kind of in our area and around. And so it's like, I don't want. I, I, I don't want every person that comes to camp who goes to another church to come to our church. That's not how that's supposed to work. But I just wish we were all in one place because mm. that's what makes Maywood special is you get to see all the people that you love or a lot of them. Um, and so I kind of, it kind of makes you long a little bit for heaven because, you know, we've met brothers and sisters in West Virginia. We sent them uh, West Virginia, you know, take me home country roads. We sent a video to Jeff Tabiner. Oh, I was like, here thinking happen, about yeah. you. So, you know, West Virginia, Alaska, all these different places that we've been. And it's just, the, the cool thing about Maywood is a lot of those people come together. And if you just had those people with you all the time, being a Christian would be really easy. Um, but we, we take a little to, Maywood to those places. Right? Yeah. 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 Get them a little taste and it's good. But yeah. I'm right there with you. I definitely take the question and answer panel. That would be awesome to have you guys there. I guess I got you in text, but y'all just follow me around and be like, so what do you guys think about this text <laughs> on this right here? You know, yeah. but no, the people for sure, teens. Like the teens here, I would take them with me to Fayetteville. That'd be awesome. I'd like for them to see it. I think it would be contagious. Because if you take the teenagers, you also take the singing. Yes. You take the people, you take the singing. So, mm-hmm. and you take the fun, and you take the jokes, and you take all the other stuff. So, in the moment, I just say, I get thing. to take it all hey, if I, I take that. Stuff. So, I love the place, yeah. but you could have. I mean, Maywood is special because it, of the place, but it's mostly special because of the people. So. Yeah. Amen. I'm so good at that. Transform is a word that describes what women do. We transform from sisters to best friends, from girlfriends to wives, from wives to mothers, mothers to grandmothers. Women are constantly evolving into a new role, a beautiful, challenging role. Much like our titles, our spiritual lives transform as well. While always a student of the word, some are called to be teachers, mentors, servants, and disciples. Transform Ladies Conference aims to bless every phase of your Christian walk. Come join us 
us in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee for a delightful weekend full of truth, God's love, Christian fellowship, and fun. www.tlcladies.org. Contact JJ Davenport. Info at tlcladies.org. Something that you already mentioned is having the pressure and limitations on yourself. And um, to lead into my next point, I personally have struggled a lot with um, Christian standards that I put out for myself. And I think a lot, of, um, a lot of that goes in with limitations and boundaries we try to set with sin. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, it can get into unhealthy relationship with God because we put pressure on ourselves that God doesn't put on us, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I think in Maywood was <clears throat> listening to all these sermons and um, seeing the kids, I get to look back and see how unhealthy, I guess, I keep using this word, how unhealthy I had perception of my faith to where I either, I would never, I, had, I wanted to be perfect for so long because I thought that was the only way to please God. And I, whenever I failed of being perfect for any amount of time, I felt like I wasn't worthy of anything. Mm -hmm. And self-worth is something I, th I think a lot of teenagers just battle through the years, no matter what they're going through. But it doesn't help whenever you have that mm -hmm. pressure of being a good Christian. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions, and I'm not sure even which exact direction you want to take with this, but... What are some ways to set those healthy Christian standards? And how do we recover from setbacks? And we have these, not just even setbacks, but guilt mm -hmm. that carries over. Yeah, because that's when I said about the guilt part. Was that like, I think it was you. It was like a couple years ago, maybe. No, I was, it was like after. Way to go, Travis. No, few no. years. I'm just like, it's yeah, I said fault. something. You she remembered from a few years ago, no. even if it was the worst. So we had so like a hard, like a Devo, and people went forward. And I, I went forward, and, you know, usually everybody cries for a little bit, and then, like, you hug, and you feel like we pray, and you feel better because you're like, okay, I went forward, and I'm repenting, I'm going to do better. But, like, for me, that has never, I do not feel good. Like, I feel love and like I don't know I feel good I know that I'm like forgiven but the guilt is so hard and like that's what you I was still crying it was like a long time after and you were like what are you crying about like not in a rude way I'm sorry you were like, like I remember I remember yeah. I do that all the time yeah. I really and did. I was like I was just like I don't know like I just the guilt on myself is still there and like I struggle with that like so much and for many years of just like to let go of things and so that's why we came up that's why we yeah. said like how do you how do you have a comeback season yeah <laughs> how do you do that yeah. <laughs> this is going to sound super harsh and we live in such a and it goes back to the accepting thing you were a failure to begin with <laughs> yeah. so i mean like there's Loser. there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing that we're going to do that is going to shock God, disappoint, yes. So I think of Peter, you're going to deny me three times. It's happening, right? <laughs> it's happening. It happens. Jesus looks at Peter. Peter goes out and weeps. I don't think that look was one of approval, right? It was probably disappointment because he loved him. Like, like, my son messes up, and I have to work through, is this a pride thing? Like tonight, we're in the middle of power hour. Is it a pride thing? Everybody's looking, and you should do something about it. Is it a pride thing because he's disobeying me, or is it like it's best for him to not hurt other people's attention? So, like, to me, I go at it, and it always sounds super negative. But, like, if I could do it perfectly, there is no reason for this whole thing. Like, why are we even here? The reason we're here is because we're imperfect, and we can't do it on our own like the first step really is saying i can't do this it's what follows that most everybody comes to a conclusion of i can't do this we go i can't do this but i know who can and so as a person who struggled with lust and would set okay i'm gonna go days i'm not gonna deal with this i'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make it 
six months, and that's not going to happen, right? That's too far. It's too much to work with. When I had cancer, it's like 15 minutes. I'm going to take 15 minutes. If I get through the next 15 minutes, then I'll look at the next. Uh, banking on that I'm probably going to fall short at some point, right? Because it's, it's not really me. That's a great goal. Um, and so my, I'm really encouraged, like, when people come forward. Like, I'm geeked, like, God has done what he said he's going to do. He's told us he sent the Holy Spirit to convict. And so we're seeing a Holy Spirit movement when we're convicted. And that's kind of why I have that reaction. Like, yes, you should cry about your sin. But there's also some victory that just happened. And it's going to be multiple victories leading up to the point you're dead until the ultimate victory. And so there's going to be failure. You're going to mess up. I remember growing up thinking, you know, my dad was not a great dad, and so I'm going to be the best dad in the world. And most nights I go to bed going, man, you did, <laughs> really not, mess this one you did not, Maybe not. You did not hit that target. And so, but there's an aspect of I want my kids to believe in the one father who doesn't mess up. And so my number one goal is to point them there. And the beauty of God is, is he can even use our mess ups to point them there. And you guys, when you come forward at camp, when you come forward at church, that's what you're doing. Like, there's no quit. There's no give up. And so Paul says that the guilt of God, the shame that God puts on our heart, leads to life. It's well, not it says, there to punish you and make you feel terrible, although we'll go that route because your soul's worth it. But he's pointing you where the worlds and Satan, which that's what he's doing, he's coming along, what he does is he tries to guilt you to death. And God's like, no, there's a purpose for the guilt I give you, and it's to bring you closer to me. I want you to be near me. I know you're going to mess up. While you were yet sinners, Christ came and died for you. And so he bought, he sacrificed for all those sins going forward. Your sin has already been paid for. It's just, do you buy that? Do you take that? Do you accept it? I don't know if it's... Um... I can't remember the exact verse. I was going to look it up on my phone. Uh, I don't have service. Um, and so, uh, but it's it's in uh, one of the Corinthian letters, and it's what you were just uh, talking about, that our guilt leads to repentance, mm -hmm. and that repentance leads to salvation, which is not to be regretted. Mm -hmm. Okay? So there's a there's a point where, I, I you know, people talk about, well, I've, I've asked for forgiveness or I've gotten forgiveness, but I still feel bad about it and I still mm -hmm. regret it. Well, that's misplaced guilt because guilt, God gives guilt a purpose. And the pur purpose is to get us to stop doing whatever we were doing. Once we've stopped doing what we're doing, and yes, it might only be for a few minutes, you know, it may only be for that time that you went forward, but I'm not supposed to necessarily have guilt after that. I mean, we all do. We all carry it around on some level, but reminding ourselves that, hey, God, the God's part in guilt was to get me to change. And when I change, I don't have to regret the things I did in the past. And I, I look, I get to looking at Bible characters. And lately, I have thought, you know, if David can be okay with God. Boom then I can probably be that's okay all with the bases, God. All the, all the babies did, that we think. Babies, everything that's, all the that's bad, David found a way to do it and was still a man after God's own heart. Why? Because he knew where to turn. He knew who to be connected to. He knew where the power was, and it wasn't in him. Saul was also evil, but Saul never could figure out that I'm supposed to be connected to God and God's the answer. David understood God was the answer. He messed up, but God Saul was didn't the touch answer. all the bees. Yeah, and, and he's still. We look at those two stories very differently yeah, if we don't have weird. God's perspective. Yeah, because we look at David and go, "God did all the terrible things." Saul just did something that we probably all would have done. Uh, you so, know. <laughs> so there's another thing I oftentimes talk about with people, and it's it's this concept. And since we're looking at the picture, you know, so we have a line here on the table, and we have a line here. Okay. So that line's ideal, and this line's unacceptable, okay? I'm never going to be ideal. I'm never going to get, you know, if you, if you golf, you're never going to. And if you are a, 18. If you, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like today, a guy pitched a perfect game for New York, 
and uh, that was the first perfect game since 2012. Okay, so most people don't pitch perfect games. Almost never does that happen. And that guy will come out the next time and probably blow the game. That's helpful. You know, <laughs> and then and then a batting average like a 300 batting average in in baseball means you got on base three out of ten times. And probably close to going to Hall of Fame. Yeah, and that's wonderful. Three out of ten times. That's a wonderful batting Hall average. Of fame. So <laughs> ideal is over here. Unacceptable means I'm doing stuff I really know I shouldn't do. I'm not doing, I'm living away from God, okay? Somewhere in between there is where we try to shoot for. I want to lean more towards this ideal, but I'm not always going to be there. And sometimes that pendulum is going to swing. And so in my mind, I get really frustrated because I'm not perfect, because I'm not ideal, because I'm not at that line but sometimes I need to be com comfortable and understand that as long as I'm kind of playing in this room, I'm okay. First John's message is you're never going to be sinless, but you want to sin less. He says, walk in the light as he's in the light. You have fellowship with one another. The blood of Christ cleanses us of our sins. First John chapter 2, verse 1 said, well, verse 10 of chapter 1 says, um, if you say you have no sin, you're a liar, you know, and you're not in the yeah. of God. and you're not with God. <laughs> Chapter two, verse one says that if you are, it says, I, I wrote these things so that you do not sin. But if you do sin, we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ, the righteous. And then in chapter three, he talks about that Just you're the yeah, child of God, and if you're a child of God, you don't practice unrighteousness, but that you practice, you know, walking in Him. And being righteous. And so there's this theme in First John that says you'll never be sinless, but you should as you mature sin less. Okay. And so if we can understand that and we can know, hey, you guys are pretty young. You're gonna have those moments because there's just a lot of your brain's chemicals. not fully developed yeah. yet. I mean there's just so much twenty five still out there. There's a cocktail. Twenty five is a long time ago for us. Cocktail of weirdness in your brain, okay, for a little while. And so that's why it seems like as it's not that we don't struggle. It's not that adults don't struggle. We make really stupid decisions, and a lot of adults do. We just but control it's just freaks. easier <laughs> sometimes because there's so much going on in y'all's lives that it makes it harder to make mature decisions sometimes because of the things that are going on. It's so the fact that you guys are making these yes. conversations yes, that means that you're closer to that to, line than you think you are. And then we so, were. I was at your age. When you're trying to determine what is what is a healthy Christian standard to aim for, mm -hmm. I think Jesus gave it to us when the question was asked, what's the greatest command? And Jesus' answer was, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. I say, I would say that the Christian standard is I need to love God with everything I've got. Okay, I want to love Him because if I love God, I'm not going to want to hurt Him. Okay, and that's going to put me at a stand. At, that's going to set one part of that standard, right? I'm not going to want to trespass against God or hurt God. So every decision I go to make, what's God going to think about this? What What would... I do if he was if Jesus was sitting right here next to me. Okay, so love God, love.